Hello and welcome to a conversation with Harsimrat Batal, the former U.S. Cabinet Minister, who had, of course, as you recall, left the NDA, left the Modi government on the issues of the very same farmers' bills that we are now seeing protests we are spilling to the streets. The farmers are agitating against the same reforms which have been initiated by the Modi government. To talk a bit more on this, I have joining with me, Mrs. Ba uh, Harsimrat Bal Batal. Uh, Ma'am, first of all, you know this is something that you had seen coming. I think we can't say that you had not forewarned the government. Uh, has any action been taken ever since your resignation? Any reach out? Do you see anything at all from the side of the government? It is, stands exactly where it was from the first day, which was on the 3rd of June, where I raised this issue. When I came to know about it on the 25th of May, when the file came to my ministry for its comments, where I categorically wrote that, please don't bring in any such laws without consulting the stakeholders, the farmers, and taking the concurrence of the state governments. That's First time you heard of these bills was 25th May, you're saying, in the middle of lockdown. 25th of May, absolutely. That's when I heard. And then the next meeting of the cabinet, which took place on the 3rd of June, I raised it, that this has come to my notice. And I appeal that no such uh, law should be made without consulting farmers and stakeholders, because there's a huge resentment, which is going to blow out of proportion and really envelope in the entire country if you don't watch it. Despite this, on the 5th of June, these ordinances were tabled on the cabinet. I again raised it over there, that repeatedly telling them that this is going to be a huge setback for the government because farmers across the nation are going to unite. There are huge apprehensions and please do not bring it in uh, without uh, taking the, uh, removing these apprehensions. I was told repeatedly that these apprehensions would be addressed before it became a law, which you saw from the month of June when the Farmer agitation started in Punjab like wildfire they grew. And from June till September, repeatedly it was the Akali Dal, not that the Congress government, I didn't till that time know that Captain knew about it and the government was very well aware of this all since, uh, since the month of July of 2019. He made no effort to tell it to the people or tell it, oppose it with the government. And I How guess do you know that Captain was involved, uh, they had been consulted on this? As you know that on the floor of the house, when these bills were tabled and when the minister was speaking, he categorically said over there that um, if you look at uh, um, you know, what he has uh, said, in these are these words which I've taken out of what he said in the parliament. And he said on the 1st of July, when there was a committee of chief ministers, which was put in which Captain Amrinder Singh and Kamal Nath were part of that committee to discuss these agriculture reforms. And then after that, he also said that on the 16th of August, Again, the Niti Aayog called a meeting by Manpreet Badal, which is the finance minister, attended it. So this is all 1st July 2019. So for one whole year, this government knew about it. But obviously, how could they oppose it? Because not only is it in Congress manifesto of 2019, where Rahul Gandhi himself has said that, you know, he is going to get rid of the entire APMC Act, and 2017 manifesto of Captain Amrinder Singh, where he promised all this, and in 2017, August, he has implemented all these things in Punjab already. So how could he not give his concurrence to the central government, which he gave? Now, they're playing politics to such an extent that they're doing a drama in the Vidhan Sabha to mislead the people, but hand in glove with the government. So my point being that the central government came up with these anti-farmer laws, not did they not only not discuss with the farmers, but even their own ally, which is the oldest ally, and a totally... Uh, farmer-based uh, Kada party, we were not even kept in the loop. When it was raised by me, no attention was given. Two months, we kept trying to get uh, reassurances and reassure the farmer when it became absolutely clear. The farmer had lost faith in any words given by any minister or even written assurances and they were clear they have no faith. Either it's going to come down, be a part of the act, that it's written there that MS MSP will be their statutory right or they were not willing to back up and take the laws back. So when that was conveyed to the government and the government was clear that we are not agreeable to that and we're going to pass the laws in the parliament due to you know the sheer uh, this thing of numbers that you have. Then Akali Dal made their stand very clear. We opposed it. We withdrew from the government. I gave in my resignation and we broke the alliance. And I think that is why you saw in Rajya Sabha, where in Lok Sabha, all this Congress and Aam Admi Party, which were playing politics, ran away when time of voting was when it was time to vote. And when Akali Dal, when a government, central government, uh, central minister withdrew, that's when it became a national issue and became a big issue in the Rajya Sabha, where 18 parties opposed it, but it was still pushed through. Then Akali Dal went running to the president that, please don't sign an accent to this, but that too was done. 
and that is when uh, the entire country woke up to the fact of these anti farmer laws and now look at what it's reached it's, the entire country is on fire and this is exactly what i kept telling this government that you're mistaken i don't know who's misleading you there's going to be a huge backlash of this and today it's reached but they insisted sometimes that middlemen were doing it then from middlemen they shifted that congressmen were doing it then they went up to name calling sometimes the farmers were called naxals now they've been called khalistanis now you're seeing farmers from across the country joining in because the fact of the matter that there are huge issues in the agriculture sector and in the farming sector which needs to be improved punjab farmers are more uh, progressive than the rest of the country because at a time uh, you know like i repeat very often that when the country was begging foreign countries for food it was a green revolution which was brought around by these farmers and these farmers are very progressive our mandi karan system is more progressive than anywhere else in the country we contribute 40% of the food that feeds this second largest population of the world even in times of covid it's this farmer that has kept the country's economy going and out of that economy the bulk is with the punjab farmer who ensured that food reached every plate of every home so now when farmers are being able to foresee what these black laws are going to do and the stance of the government remains the same from the 3rd or the 5th of june till uh, the 29th or the of november it is extremely unfortunate that for 6 months you don't hear the voice of your own people why this rigidity you're doing it for the good of the farmers you talk about sabka vishwas take their vishwas also i don't understand um it's not my way or the highway this is not a dictatorship this is a democracy why not listen to your people which is what you've been elected to do okay some of the issues that i'll just try and break down the issues that are being raised by the farmers and the response you know one of course is uh, what the government is saying that only three states are really agitating they are saying that it's punjab haryana and you know western up so it's not really that the entire farmers of the entire country are up in arms uh it's they of course as you also mentioned they are trying to paint this as agitation of the middlemen so the, this is the narrative that they are trying to sell they are, i mean perhaps thinking this is a waiting game and they're going to wait it out for it to peter out on its own as it did with the ca absolutely that's exactly what they they are trying to do is tire out the farmers and um, where i used to feel guilty that being a part of the government maybe i was not able to explain to them properly or make them understand the importance of what the people are feeling i kept blaming myself but now i've realized in the last two months that with lakhs of people sitting on the roads in punjab for three months and now outside delhi for six months they obviously were not interested in hearing the people it wasn't me that i could explain that they were not interested in hearing so it's uh, clear that um, like i said that punjab and haryana are more progressive than what it is in other parts of the country the entire farming systems where i mean in our state after every five villages there's a mandi now this act talks about that you can sell anywhere which farmer has the capacity to even reach a mandi that is why in punjab there's a mandi made after every five villages so that is absolutely next he doesn't have to waste time and energy trying to find a mandi close to him then you got road infrastructure which uh, makes it easy for him to uh, you know access those mandis so the systems that have been made here by various governments and especially by sir prakash singh padal ji brought in whole lot of reforms and gave a uh, really gave a boost to the farmers so that agriculture could take off which is uh, why it's more progressive here and these farmers are understanding way more about uh, the setbacks that all these laws are going to do and slowly slowly punjab haryana farmers have also understood what punjab farmers started saying then western up farmers have understood now farmers across the nation are beginning to understand so when someone has already you know it's like when you're going down a road if there's a jam in front the person who reaches the jam first knows better than the one who's still buzzing down the highway that there's a jam in front so punjab is in agriculture is more progressive it's progressed way more than many parts of bihar and a uh, up and all but the farmers are all understanding and all of them are uniting that there are on the issue of msp that you may you may give it for 23 crore but if no one's getting that msp except for maybe wheat and rice in punjab here and nobody else is getting it's so just a fraud on the farmers so they want that msp should be made a statutory right and this is exactly what prime minister has recommended in 2011 when he was chairman of the committee which was making recommendations uh, to manmohan singh as uh, was gujarat, the chief minister as chief minister yeah and he was chief minister of gujarat at that time and that's what his um, uh, recommendation to sir manmohan singh was that make msp a statutory right so 
what has changed from 2011 to 2020 and today if the farmers are agitating and asking for it if you are such a well wisher of the farmers then give them what they want don't shove down their throat what you think is good for them what is your biggest fear out of these these uh, bill the laws are implemented the new acts are implemented what is your biggest fear what do you think is the worst case scenario that will happen so the farmers of punjab and haryana first of all they feel that with private players coming in um, into the mandi system where they do not have to pay the market fee where they do not have to pay any taxes there is going to be these big corporates who are going to come in and because they do not have to pay the various taxes they can afford to give a better price to the farmers so any farmer getting a better price will prefer to go there when they start going to the private players the existing government mandi system will begin to crumble because of the lack of funds and once in a year or two when that have that's crumbled then these big players will have the monopoly when then they will start uh, you know um, misusing the farmer or repressing the farmer number one is that number two they think that eventually this is a step in the direction of msp being withdrawn eventually and the government purchase which takes place in punjab haryana of wheat and rice that will come to uh, maybe not in this crop or the next crop or the crop after that but eventually when the private system is set up the government will withdraw the sarkari system because that's that system will, is likely to crumble number three with the contract farming the redressal systems are so weak that it's an sdm who is going to the farmer doesn't even have the right to go to court for it so tomorrow they are not they don't you know they feel they're going to become labor in their own land so there are various kind of apprehensions the good point being you have to put his apprehensions at ease you can't say they keep saying ki future mein ye ek bhayanak sa ye banaya ja raha hai bhai bhayanak mein banaya ja raha hai ki nahi ja raha unke mann mein wo baat bas gayi hai aap unko assure kariye ya to wo assure kis cheez se a short term means that what they feel that they get a short term not what you feel because you are not a farmer unfortunately it's sad but in this um, entire existing government i don't know how many of them are really connected to farming or are coming uh, you know in the union cabinet who comes from the farming background uh, to be able to understand these farmers because if they did which why did i walk out because i come from an agrarian state what my job was that what the government is saying is very good bill go tell my people when i would tell my people they would say no it's like this it's like this is what's going to happen and i only had the government telling me no it's not going to happen but the people were not reassured that that's not going to happen just your words they wanted it part of the law why were you not um, willing to make it a part of the law and why are you still not willing to make it a part of the law if you're saying verbally that msp will stay then why can't you put in one line and put an end to this entire agitation and that's that, what they are saying now that it's administrative decision executive decision which each state can take for itself but we can't put it in part of the central law so that is what they are saying but the nobody is understanding the farmers don't understand that because the purchase in of uh, the government purchase of wheat and rice is done by the state governments on behalf of the central government tomorrow if the central government turns around and says we don't want to purchase what can the state government do where can they give them an msp so the msp is decided by the central government the wheat and rice is purchased on behalf of the central government by these two state governments and that is what is keeping the economy of work these uh, states going and not only that neighboring states also come and sell over here so the good point being that the governments the farmers have lost faith in verbal commitments they wanted they want an assurance this assurance was recommended by prime minister himself as chief minister in 2011 and now when the nationwide farmers are agitating for this you will have to give in to them because uh, it's unfair that you bring in through a concurrent list something which is for trade and commerce but you say it's for the benefit of the farmers when it clearly says it's for trade and commerce so either you're benefiting the traders or the commerce in covid time you don't consult the farmers but you want to insist on the farmers that it's for his benefit so uh, obviously farmers are on the ground and i don't see this agitation going anywhere unless the government you know if they are under a misconception that they're going to tire out the farmers they are going to you know make a bigger committee keep talking it's not people are losing patience that time for that was when i kept telling you please talk to them that was the time to talk to them take them on board you have left it till too late now is this agitation it it started with the farmers but i will tell you very honestly even employees even traders 
even shopkeepers even normal people they're all joining in this agitation because the treatment that was meted out to the farmers wanting to peacefully protest how it was handled in haryana how they behaved with them old women young children old farmers and then after reaching delhi three six days sitting in the cold not a single minister reaches out to them and they just keep on to keep talking it's actually agitating a whole lot of people and more and more farmers are going to reach delhi and it's going to become even tougher so i would appeal to the central government that just trying to you know wish it away tire them out diluted is not going to happen it's time for the prime minister to realize that he had been misled by all the agencies or whoever should have told him the truth i tried i didn't but what i said has been proved true today and i can only tell you that it's only going to get worse if you don't sort it out at the earliest that's what i wanted to ask you because you know you have a you know feel of what's the the anger on the ground uh, how bad is it going to get are the farmers are here you know we are hearing that they've come with procurement and you know stocks to last year even a month or more if they need to are they going to spend the entire winter here on the highway uh, is that what they, unless the government actually listens to them and does something for them priya yeah, slowly slowly you found that first it was punjab farmers who were walking down the highway haryana joined the then you had from up you got from uttarakhand you even got from down south maharashtra you give it more time you'll find everybody converging in delhi and then it's going to become it's going to be a be a fire you're not going to be able to drowse and this is exactly what i kept trying to explain to them but i was told ki aapki galat fehmi hai bicholia you know even the day when there was a bharat band um, uh, which was the first time that they had in punjab and haryana everything has shut down i was shocked that my one of my colleagues says that you know we found out and ye clear ho gaya ye to sab middlemen ne karaya you have been off the mark from day one you not understood the gravity of the situation you not understood the sentiments and till date you not understanding the sentiments which is why i am going on appealing again and again it's only going to get worse from here and um, it's going to get worse from all sides so please sort it out this just you know trying to dilute the issue going to give lip service trying to tire them out trying to distract it and name calling people are going to lose patience and uh, you know if god forbid uh, things get out of hand solely i will hold the central government responsible because you brought about an act without consulting the people you didn't address their apprehensions you're not addressing it even today We'll take a short break and come back and talk to you, and also a little bit about the impact this will have. Because don't forget, Punjab is also going to elections in just a year. So we're going to take a look at what's going to happen also on ground over there. We were discussing the farmers' woes, and of course, what is happening on ground on the farmers' bills. How do you see this impacting the elections? Because elections are in 2022. This is the first time the alliance will be fighting uh, separately. You know, you've broken up with the BJP. On ground, the BJP doesn't have much of a presence. Do you think they are feeling that Punjab? Chhodo, we'll only focus on UP. Uh, how do you explain their thinking, given the fact that elections are not so far away? The BJP never had much of a presence in Punjab from day one. Even in 2014, when there was a wave in the same uh, in favor of BJP, Punjab, uh, you know, went the the opposite to what the rest of the country, and same in 2019 as well. But when you talk about elections, I think. in punjab election is not going to be lost on people that how certain parties have um, played a double game one game is for the benefit of the people but hand in glove with the central government what you've done for example in these very same three acts like i said earlier from 1st of july 2019 captain amrinder singh and his entire lot knew about it and not did they not only tell people but they uh, about it but even gave the concurrence now you look at after the acts were done after the ordinance came in in on the 5th of june on uh, 29th of august when in punjab was the first state like you know when the entire protest started so on one hand he has already implemented these things in punjab in 2017 he has already given his concurrence to the central government but to mislead the people on the 29th of august he calls a vidhan sabha session where he rejects all these three anti farmer laws and you will be surprised that session started on the 12th or the 13th of september for one month he they did not even send those resolutions rejecting these anti farmer ordinance to the center to the parliament then you know parliament takes place where rahul gandhi and sonia gandhi don't even bother arriving when these bills are tabled 
uh, their MPs along with the AAP, AAP MPs say a whole load of things for public perception, but when it comes out for walking, they do a walkout, which indirectly uh, aids the government. It is a Shiromani Akali Dal which stands there and opposes it, votes against it, leaves the government and breaks the alliance. After that, Captain Amrinder Singh, when again he finds that, you know, it's going against him when these things are exposed, then he calls another session of the Vidhan Sabha. Once it's passed, it becomes a law. He calls a session of Vidhan Sabha, uh, which is, I think, around the 20th of October. And uh, in this, uh, on uh, was it 20th of October, the, whatever, after the parliament session. And in this, he does a big UN cry and a drama of what? that he is bringing about an amendment. He doesn't give it to the oppositions to read what is being tabled, special session is called. And what does it come out? That he puts in an amendment that anyone who buys under MSP will have to go to jail. <laughs> you tell me, bringing an amendment means first of all, you're accepting the law. Then you're trying to mislead the people that you know there'll be a prison term. And at the same time, he says that now it will go to the governor and then to the president. And only when they give accent will this uh, you know, will this be accepted, knowing very well the government, governor or the president or not. So it was all a drama for the sake of the people. Then after that, you know very well that how, when the trains were an economic blockade by the center was implemented on Punjab, where we needed urea to do a sewing, but they were told that no good strain will come unless you allow the passenger train. Captain, instead of arranging the fertilizer and ensuring your farmers are not you know, going everywhere and going crazy trying to arrange urea, started pressurizing the unions to clear the tracks and let the passenger trains run. So one side is this, in this entire thing which happened in Haryana, like Mr. Khattar says that if I try to call him, you think it wasn't the captain's duty to go sit down in Delhi or go talk to Mr. Khattar and ensure that his people are not treated like this when they're trying to do the democratic right, but he would not answer their phone. So this entire episode, Captain has been hand in glove and dancing at the center's back and forth. And what to say about Amadmi Party? I mean, here is a notified gazette by uh, Arvin Kejriwal, knowing very well on the 26th and the 27th, the farmers one year, one month ago had said that they're going to lay siege on Delhi. On the 23rd of November, he passes, uh, uh, the, this notification comes out which is basically the farmer producer, uh, these uh, acts of the central government are being notified in, in Delhi. So he is telling the farmers he is with them. And at the same time, the anti-farmer acts are being notified uh, for Delhi. So this is the double game and through you, I would really want that someone should go and ask these Punjab uh, people who in any case are beating of the Congress party, that what do they have to say about this? I mean, how are they saying that uh, our army party is against it when their own Delhi government is going to find these anti-farmer laws? So the moral of the story is, which I hope people and the nation understand, and especially Punjabis understand, that here are two parties who are towing the center's line, who are hand in glove with them. But wo jaise like they say, na, hati ke daat khane ke kuch aur aur dekhane ke kuch aur. They're showing the people solidarity and doing all this entire drama. And on the other hand, they are implementing the very same things which they are calling black laws. And, uh, and Amrinder Singh has not rejected those things passed in 2007, August, which was part of his manifesto. He's going to do it. He implemented it in the August of 2017, all in these the private Mondays, private players, everything. He has not repealed that or not taken that back till date. He's given concurrence there. He's not taken that concurrence back till date. So these double games that he's playing and Arvind Kejriwal is implementing it even as of today. So at the end of the day, it is the Shromani Akali Dal who means what it says. For two months, we tried to make the central government see sense so that things don't come to this extent. Sitting inside that government, it was my duty that things do not come to this state that they have come now. That was my duty. But when it was clear that they are not willing to hear, then the fight was clear that when the battle lines got drawn, we were at the side of the farmers and we clearly proved it. And even till date, in this entire uh, agitation which is taking place, wherever the farmers want, I mean, Subir has said again and again, wherever you want, on the 1st of October, we did a march to the governor to give him the memorandum against these laws. It was such a huge um, uh, march that the farmers uh, union started saying, you're politicizing it, passed it, but we were there in their support. We are fighting this battle on their behalf. We will continue to fight it, even now, because I fear that these uh, unions 
are going to be you know when you are in the central government you have whole lot of agencies working in many different ways they are going to be if there were some people planted to uh, you know make them make the farmers look like as a patani ab ye khalistani ab ye anti i saw that yeah i was wondering yeah. whether it was a plant or not yes of course it's a plant and now the plants are going to come in many different ways because they want to value the agriculture they're not going to roll back these anti farmer laws if they wanted to do it they would have the move that is what you are worried about they would have started the move tire out the move or divide the uh, uh, unions that's these are all different forces which are going to come into play and uh, i hope that people see through this thank you so much for talking to us i mean politics aside there are really no winners here only the losers and that to the farmers of our country because i want to end with a quote from a bjp mp i asked him is the bjp losing the farm vote he says what i'm worried is that india is going to be losing the farmers vote and that really is the biggest worry for all of us but thank you for this conversation thank you for talking to us for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon